Bill will describe how to assemble an Estes Alpha model rocket. This video is not affiliated with, endorsed, or sponsored by the Estes Rocket Company or the Boy Scouts of America. All product names, logos, and brands are property of their respective owners, and all company, product, and service names used in this video are for identification purposes only. Use of these names, logos, and brands does not imply endorsement. This video was created for the sole use of members of Cub Scout Pack 278 of Braddock Heights, Maryland, to help families prepare for the annual rocket launch outdoor activity. Okay, so step one, make sure you have all the necessary pieces to complete the model rocket. This video is specific to the Alpha series of Estes model rockets. The package you receive should contain the items shown here. Step two, very carefully remove the three wooden laser cut fins. Step three, use sandpaper to carefully smooth the edges. I used 100 grit, but any sandpaper should do. Step four, Using an X-Acto knife, carefully cut out the notch in the nose cone. Be careful not to cut off the eyelet, the small loop that would ultimately hold the parachute string. This is what it should look like after removing the middle piece. Carefully clean off the eyelet using the X-Acto knife. Step 5. Prepare your pieces for painting. I like to use a needle and thread to hang each piece separately while I spray paint them in the garage. This is how they look before painting. I used old hangers to create hanging racks in my garage. Here's an example of the fins hanging in my garage before painting. Certainly there are many ways to paint each piece and you don't necessarily have to do this before assembly is complete. This is just how I chose to do it this year. Here are the pieces after the initial paint job. Note that on the only things that I painted were the nose cone, the fins, the rocket body tube, and the launch lug. Step six, now you have to glue each piece in the proper place. Most super glue brands will work and I've seen people use hot glue as well. Last year, I used this medium Instacure glue I found at the local hobby store. This year, I decided to try the extra thick version. I found that you have to be extra careful when using these glues as they tend to be very thin and drip after application. However, they are very strong and tend to dry very fast, allowing faster assembly. Step 7. The next step is to measure and mark the engine mount tube. I found the instructions to be rather difficult to follow, but essentially you will be making three marks. The first mark is 3 eighths of an inch from the end of the tube, or 10 millimeters. The second mark is 1 inch from the tube, or 25 millimeters. And the third mark is 2 and a half inches from the end of the tube, or 6.4 centimeters. Next, you will want to cut an approximate 1 eighth inch, or 3 millimeter cut, at the last mark you made. This will be where the engine hook will be placed. Extend the lines at each mark to make them easier to see. Your finished markings should look something like this. Step 8. Install and secure the engine hook in the 3 millimeter hole you made. You will use the green adapter ring to secure the engine hook. Slide the adapter ring over the engine mount tube to the line you made the 1 inch mark, the 25 millimeter mark. Once you are comfortable with your ability to move it to the right place, apply glue under the adapter ring and slide it into place. I applied glue all around the engine mount tube using a very thin coat and then slid the adapter ring into place. Be aware that the glue will run and seep out around the edges. It is best to have something underneath to protect your work area. Step 9. Assemble the rocket fins. To do this, you will need to use the template from the instruction manual. Cut out the area outlined in red. This will be wrapped around the bottom of your rocket body tube to mark the location of each of the three rocket fins, as well as the launch lug. Carefully wrap the template around the bottom of the tube and use a piece of tape to secure it. Be sure and leave space at the bottom of the tube to allow you to mark both sides of the template. Using a pencil, mark each of the arrowed lines on either side of the template. The next step will involve removing the template and connecting these dots with a straight line. These lines will tell you where to apply the rocket fins and launch lug. It is also helpful to copy the letters from the template, for example, the LL and FL above. The three FL marks designate the fin line, and the single LL mark is the lug line. Remove the template and very lightly connect each of the marks you made. On the LL or lug line, you will need to make a mark that is approximately one and three quarters inch or 4.4 centimeters from the bottom of the rocket body tube. This will designate the bottom margin of where you should glue the launch lug in a future step. 
Carefully glue each of the rocket fins along the previously marked FL or fin line marks that you made. I have arranged my fins so that the pre-drilled hole is against the rocket body and the lower margin of each fin is aligned to the lower portion of the rocket body tube. Now glue the launch lug in the proper location along the LL or lug line you made in the previous step. Step 10. Glue the assembled engine mount tube in the, in the proper location. Note that the proper position is to have the engine mount tube sticking out of the bottom of the rocket. The line you drew in the previous step, the 3 8 inch or 10 millimeter mark, designates the proper alignment. Apply a thin coat of glue around the green adapter ring and insert the engine mount tube to the correct location for the glue to dry. You may have to press the sides of the rocket body to ensure a secure fit. Once dry, I also put a bit of extra glue in the space created inside the rocket body around the engine mount tube. Step 11. Secure the rubber band shock cord inside the rocket body tube. For this step, you will need the template provided in the instruction manual. Cut out the template as outlined here. Align the rubber band shock cord as shown here and apply a small amount of glue. Fold over the number one flap to secure it in place. Next, fold over the number two flap by applying a bit of glue to the number three area. The final folded template should look like the above photo. The next step can be tricky, but is often easiest if you use an applicator to apply the glue, for example, a Q-tip or a long glue applicator. Ideally, you want to glue the rubber band shock cord at least one and a half inches or 3.8 centimeters inside the top of the rocket body tube. Step 11. Secure the parachute and rubber band shock cord to the nose cone. The instructions for doing this are pretty clear in the instruction manual, but I've provided a close-up of how I arranged them on the nose cone eyelet. I used a simple square knot to secure the rubber band shock cord. Here is the finished product. Here is the finished product with the nose cone removed and the parachute folded another view from the top of the rocket, and a close-up view of the rocket base with the engine hook and engine mount tube exposed. Thank you for watching and enjoy your rocket.